All right, we are live in beautiful, sunny Florida. And today, Fight Fans, we are going to be breaking down UFC Fight Night 128, Barboza versus Lee in Atlantic City, New Jersey. And uh, I'm very happy to be here right now. Um, Google Hangouts was giving me problems for the second week in a row, but managed to figure out I almost had to delay on you guys and have to do it tonight because uh, I actually got to be to work here in a little bit. But um, we're here. We're here. We're going to break down the uh, entire, what do we got this week? Hopefully not another 14 fights like last week. That was a little bit of a drag. Got 13 fights this week, man, barring there any uh, injuries, anything like that. But uh, very solid card, man. I got four plays. Very excited. Um, Just to go over last week, unfortunately, I did have a losing week. I was on a nice little... Uh, two ufc card win streak there for a little bit believe it or not two uh straight wins but last week man um arjun buller arjun buller fucked me over a little bit there um i would absolutely call that uh loss of fluke uh if arjun buller and adam wyzorik were to fight nine out of ten times arjun buller wins that fight but this is a fight game we we, we got to expect uh some outcomes like that because we uh we watch a very crazy sport, guys. So yeah, just had to take that one on the chin. Uh, five point five units on Arjun Buller lost me there. Uh, Alex Howboy came through for me though. Um, one bet I was kind of pissed about. Uh, the last and third bet I had was um, uh, Luke Sanders Patrick Williams fight not to go the distance. That uh that fight went the distance somehow. Somehow Patrick Williams and Luke Sanders both went the uh, distance for the first time in their UFC careers. I guess uh I shouldn't have expected Luke Sanders to finish Patrick Williams because if we're being honest, guys, Luke Sanders is a jobber and I look forward to fading him uh very, very soon. Um yeah, if you can't put Patrick Williams out of there when he's uh, you know, bending over with his hands on his knees. Um, I don't even know what to say to you if you can't even finish that guy. But guys, four plays this weekend. I'm super excited. I hope everything's going okay with the video right now because just all kinds of technical problems. So if it is working and you're hearing me perfectly, that's uh, some sort of a miracle. But let's just jump right into this card because like I said, I have to be to work very soon. I'm actually going to try to run through this one very quickly. If you're expecting a long in-depth breakdown of Aspen Lad versus Leslie Smith, Probably not going to see it here, man. I'm probably going to run through that fight in about 30 seconds, but I highly recommend you guys go check out some of my best buds here on YouTube. Uh, best fight picks, Daniel Levy. Go check out Will Martin. Go check out Justin of UFC Bro Picks. Justin and Ricky, they're awesome dudes. Um, so yeah, man, let's just jump right into this. And first fight of the night happens to be my first play of the night. We got Tony Martin, minus 260, taking on Kaita Nakamura, plus 220. Um... This is an interesting man, Tony Martin, moving up to 170 pounds here. And is will moving up a whole 15 pounds be beneficial for Tony Martin because he will not be cutting as much weight, or will it hurt him in the long run because he will be giving up some size? He will be carrying on uh, added weight on him so how will that affect his cardio because usually tony martin's cardio isn't that it's it's pretty decent if anything but man um he's uh he's not being welcomed very easily here in the welterweight division i thought usually when guys want to move up a weight class like this they want to um you know maybe get a little bit of a softball one sec guys All right, just had to uh, sneeze there real quick. <laughs> but yeah, man, they did not give Tony Martin a softball here whatsoever in his uh, welterweight debut. Uh, Kaito Nakamura is uh, no slouch at all. 33 wins, 8 losses, uh, 2 draws. Uh, not very often do you see guys with 18 submission wins. Kaito Nakamura, even, and you look at this recent uh, UFC run he's been on here. So he's been back for what? Back in the UFC for to five or six fights. He's been back for five fights now. Came back, submitted uh, Li Jingliang, who is no slouch at all. Um, very, very close decision with uh, Tom Breeze. I actually think Kaita Nakamura probably won that fight. And he was a plus 750 underdog here, guys. 750 underdog. And he almost pulled off one of the biggest upsets in UFC history. In my opinion, he probably should have. I thought that fight should have been scored for him. Uh, could Probably could go either way, though. Submitted Kyle Noak. 
won a hard 15 rounds with Eliza Zaleski Dos Santos, who is one of the most underrated fighters in the UFC, and then won a uh, decision over Alex Morono. Uh, the split that's next to that decision, I disagree with that completely. I thought Kaito Nakamura clearly won that fight against uh, Alex Morono, and he came through as an underdog there. Came through as an underdog against Ji Ling Liang. Came through as an underdog against Kyle Noak. Came through as an underdog against Alex Morono. This dude, Kaito Nakamura, is an uh, absolute underdog king. Uh, I think Tony Martin might be biting off a little bit more than he can chew here with his uh, welterweight debut. Uh, I think when it comes to the uh, the striking here, Tony Martin has made improvements with the striking, but uh, he is no world-class striker whatsoever. Uh, neither is Kaito Nakamura, but... Uh, I actually think Kaito Nakamura might have something for him on the feet, man. And then when it comes to the grappling, Tony Martin is a very strong grappler, but he was a very strong grappler, 155 pounds. Now that he's giving up size, Kaito Nakamura, as crafty as he is, one does not simply have 18 submission wins, and one does not simply submit Li Jing Liang. Um, I think Kaito Nakamura absolutely is going to have something for him on the ground, and uh you know, when Tony Martin comes in here against these uh, uh, elite grapplers, we've seen him uh, We've seen him get submitted by uh, Leo Santos. We've seen him get uh, submitted by uh, Benil Dariush. I think, uh, I think there's a good chance he gets submitted here by Kaito Nakamura. I think Kaito Nakamura, with the size, the experience, uh, Tony Martin's first fight in the new weight class, I think this is the recipe for a complete letdown spot, man. And I think the... Uh, the plus 220 underdog has a very good shot here. I actually lined Kaito Nakamura somewhere around minus 150. So, man, I had to do it. I had to take the uh, the two-unit shot on uh, Kaito Nakamura here. I got it at plus 205 to win 4.1 units, but I'm very happy. I can't wait to see this fight, man. I um, think I got a live underdog here in Kaito Nakamura. So, two units to win uh, 4.1. Sorry, I keep leaving the camera, guys. We're, uh, we're uh, out here with a... Uh, with uh, some allergies but yeah moving on to the uh the next fight of the night if i can uh, actually get it up here but yeah um kaito nakamura uh fit, yeah didn't even get my official pick but yeah i got kaito nakamura i will say second round submission so moving on to this one man this is a battle of uh two guys i'm pretty high on we got ricky simone minus 160 taking on marab davishvili plus 140 uh, quick and simple breakdown here. I do think both guys are pretty damn good wrestlers. I think they're both very strong in the clinch. Uh, I think when it comes to the grappling, it's probably about even on the ground. But I do think Val Valishvili is actually a little bit stronger. He, man, you could tell how strong he was in his last fight against Frankie Sands. Who Frankie Sands? You say what you want about that guy. Frankie Sands is a hell of a wrestler himself. So I think Marab might have the grappling edge here, but. I think Ricky Simone's grappling might be good enough to where he stuffs enough and he uh, lands enough on the feet because I do think he is uh, the sharper boxer on the feet. So I do think uh, Ricky Simone will be able to uh, probably stuff enough takedowns to outstrike Marab here. Um, it's probably the rightful favorite. I disagree with plus 140 a little bit. I think it should be a little more like uh, Simone minus 130. Uh, Marab uh, minus 110 so we'll see I got Ricky Simone I'll say 29 28 unanimous uh, decision uh, moving on to the next one man we got Aspen Ladd minus 145 against Leslie Smith plus 125 not going to talk about this one a whole lot but I actually am going to go with the underdog Leslie Smith here um, Leslie Smith hasn't really shown the best takedown defense unfortunately and that is Aspen Ladd's uh, path to victory here but We've seen Leslie Smith uh, stop these hype trains before. I think Aspen Ladd, she's super young. She needs to take that first L. I think Leslie Smith is uh, tough enough, savvy enough. She's got enough veteran experience here. I think she might be able to stuff enough takedowns and uh, beat Aspen Ladd's ass on the feet here, man. So I don't know. I, it, it's hard to have any kind of confidence behind it, but I do understand the money that did come on, come in on uh, Leslie Smith. So I'm going to go with Leslie Smith, 29-28 uh, split decision moving on to the next fight man this is i'm kind of looking forward to this one man and you, you, it's just a weird fight it, it just kind of has a, a weird thing about it and i'm interested to see what happens for sure Corey anderson minus 125 taking on patrick cummins plus 105 
mirror images of each other. Um, <laughs> besides Corey Anderson being a little bit bigger, a little bit more athletic, uh, a little younger. Um, I mean, both good wrestlers, both guys not too great on the feet, both guys terrible chins, man. I mean, other than the uh, the age, the athleticism, I mean, I, I, it's a pretty mirror matchup, but because of those reasons, like the uh, the, the age, and um, I just think he has more left in the tank. Uh, I'm going to go with Corey Anderson here. I think he'll probably TKO Patrick Cummins in the late rounds. I'll say uh, Corey Anderson, third round TKO. I think he probably gets the better of the wrestling, uh, eventually wears Patrick Cummins out. Uh, probably lands some big ground and pound and puts him away. So I'm going to go with uh, Corey Anderson here, and I will say he wins this via a uh, a third round TKO. Just one sec, guys. All right. So yeah, Corey Anderson third round TKO. Um, I know my boy uh, Justin UFC Bro Picks. He bet this fight not to go the distance. Calls it the battle of the chinniest chins, and uh, I hope he cashes that one. I think he cashes that one, man, because both these guys cannot take a shot for shit, if we're being honest here. So moving on to the next fight of the night, and this is indeed my second play. We got Luan Chagas, minus 115, taking on Sire Bahadur Zada, minus 105. If you guys want to hear an interesting fact about this one, uh, Luan Chagas was eight years old. When Sire Baha Durzada made his uh, MMA pro debut, Chagas was eight years old. So, man, I mean, just looking at that fact, uh, the fact that this is a young man's game, Sire Baha Durzada, um, what can I say? I mean, the dude, he does hit like a truck. He is crafty. Um, he's got some decent striking. He's a decently strong grappler. But thing is, Sire doesn't fight. Sire has uh three fights in the last five years uh one of those being a uh a loss to uh john doomsday howard who the fuck is john doomsday howard uh then he came back after about a three-year layoff submitted brandon thatch and if you don't know how to submit brandon thatch by now you don't even belong in the ufc then he knocked out uh rob wilkinson uh once again if you don't know how to knock out rob wilkinson in the ufc you probably shouldn't be in the ufc so Man, I mean, obviously he came back and he's on that two-fight win streak, but, ah, oh man, it, this is a whole new game here with uh, Luan Chagas, who is shown to be a very bright bright prospect. He's looked sharp on the feet. His grappling's amazing. I mean, the fact that he came in in short notice and went to a draw with a guy as talented as Sergio Marais, that's impressive. Um I had him against Eric Silva. He kind of uh, let me down there, but everyone's got to take that first UFC loss. And Eric Silva is a guy who's been in the UFC for years now. I mean, he's still a tough out for anybody. Um, but then he uh, he bounced. He you know he could have fallen off a cliff after that Eric Silva loss, but he bounced back. Uh, took on a tough vet and Jim Wallhead. Absolutely smoked uh, Jim Wallhead. Did exactly what he was supposed to do. And now he's uh, now he's going to be given another. Uh, Old dog here in Sire Baja de Rosada, and uh, I got Luan Chagas to win this very convincingly. I think he can get the better of Sire on the feet, and then I think he can uh, take him down eventually, uh, submit him here. So I'm going to go with Luan Chagas. I think he gets another second round submission, and I do have two units on Luan Chagas at minus 105 to win 1.9 units. So two units, Luan Chagas, second round submission. Uh, let's go. So moving on to the next fight of the night, we do have Magomed Bibulatov. He is, I don't think he's the, he is the biggest favorite of the card. So Magomed Bibulatov, biggest favorite of the card, minus 365, taking on Ulka Sasaki plus 305. Um, not much to say about this one, man. This is probably the fight I looked into like the least amount of, for being honest, even less so than the uh, Leslie Smith Aspen Lad fight, because I actually was even considering a bet on Leslie Smith, but man, I I don't want to go out here and uh, lay down the four to one on uh, Magomed Bubulatov again. Uh, he let us down against John Moraga, but I mean, obviously we can see John Moraga absolutely has turned the corner somewhere down the road. 
Um, Olka Sasaki. Olka Sasaki is a tough out for anybody just based on how fucking huge he is for a 125 pounder. I mean, not often do we see five foot 10, 71 inch reach in that flyweight division. It's crazy. He's 28 years old and he's, he's in his prime. He's got amazing grappling, uh, needs some work on the feet, but I think that's what it's going to come down to, man. I think, uh, Magomed is going to be able to keep it on the feet where he wants it. He's going to probably stuff the grappling exchanges. It's going to outstrike Olga Sasaki over the course of three rounds here. Maybe even get a knockout. So I'm going to go with Magomed Bibulatov. I will say he gets it done by a uh, 30-27 decision. So moving on to the next one, man, here. We got Ryan LaFlair, minus 130, taking on Alex Garcia, uh, plus 130. So this is a weird one, man. I... uh. Ah, man, this is a weird one. Alex Garcia, he, he came through as an underdog in his last play against um, homeboy who just fought this past weekend, uh, Muslim Salikov. So, I mean, Alex Garcia is just one of those guys. He, he's all the talent in the world. He's a great grappler, uh, strong-ass wrestler, uh, hits like a truck on the feet. Uh, he's no techn super technical striker by any means, but he's just so dangerous there because he hits like a truck. Um, he, he's an excellent athlete, man. Just something doesn't click. He gasses, he makes mistakes. Um, he, he's, he just comes off as one of those guys to me that is, um, oh, he, he's an athlete. He's not really a fighter. He's an athlete. Um, an athlete who just ended up in MMA. That's what he comes off as to me. Uh, Ryan LaFleur, he is a, uh, he's a very strong wrestler. I would even say he might even be a little bit stronger wrestler than Alex Garcia. And I think if he can get in there early, land takedowns early, don't give Garcia any shots on the feet because if we're talking about a full uh, gas tank, Alex Garcia going in there striking uh, Ryan LaFleur, we saw Ryan LaFleur get absolutely starched last time out. So I think uh, most likely what we'll end up seeing here is probably an Alex Garcia early uh, KO or Ryan LaFleur lands those early takedowns. Uh, where's Garcia out? Garcia is just absolutely gas in the later rounds. Probably see a Ryan LaFleur uh, third round TKO. Uh, we'll see. Uh, fight not doesn't go to to uh, decision is uh, plus 168. That's actually a decent line. I, I kind of favor this one not to uh, – wait, no, I'm looking at the uh, – Jesus Christ, I'm looking at the uh, the wrong lines there. Fight doesn't go to decision, plus 166. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, that's that's a good line. Um, I, I, I do kind of like this fight not to go decision. I already have enough bets, though. I'm not going to bet that. But, yeah, I'm going to go with Ryan LaFleur here. I say he gets it done by a third-round TKO after wearing Alex Garcia out over the course of a couple rounds. So moving on to the next one here, man. Uh, we got Danker minus... Uh, three, 355 taking on Jim Miller plus 295. I think the uh, the wide line here for Dan Hooker is probably right. Uh, he's in his prime. Miller's on the way out. Um, Jim Miller, I mean, how can you not love watching this guy fight? He's one of the most exciting guys. He always brings it. He'll fight anybody. Uh, thing is, Dan Hooker's been looking great. Jim Miller's been look looking old. So, I mean, you got to go with the trend of how things are looking lately. Dan Hooker's probably going to outstrike Jim Miller here. Um, over the course of three rounds, maybe even get a knockout. Uh, I lean with the decision, though. So I think the younger, sharper striker and Dan Hooker probably outstrikes Jim Miller here over the course of three rounds. So I say Dan Hooker probably wins his 30-27 decision, but if Jim Miller can go in there, land some takedowns, make it ugly, uh, you never know, man. I definitely wouldn't recommend uh, parlaying up Dan Hooker at minus 355, but uh, I do think he's definitely the rightful favorite here. So moving on to the, uh, the the next fight of the night, man. This is uh, this is a big one for me. We got Brett Johns, minus 105, taking on Aljamain Sterling, minus 115. Um, really, when I look at this fight, the first thing that jumps out to me, I really think is the most important thing. Aljamain Sterling got knocked out viciously, viciously, like, what, four Four months ago against uh, old Marlon Marais. I mean, we're talking, we're talking uh, like a life-changing knockout. I mean, that was bad. A minute into the fight, uh, got hit by the knee, knocked out cold, and he's coming back after four months. I, I, I guess um, that's 
not a very wise decision on Aljamain Sterling's part, in my opinion. Uh, we just saw this past weekend uh, Matthew Lopez. He got brutally KO'd by uh, half Ayala Sun Sal about four months ago. Came back, and uh, he looked like dog shit and gassed out. Um, maybe that's what happens with Aljamain Sterling here. I don't know. Um, but the thing is, even a, even looking through Aljamain Sterling's record, um, his last win, the uh, the ghost of Henan Burrell, he, man- he managed to decision him. Uh, Augusto Mendez, who, for being honest, is kind of just a jiu-jitsu guy who fell into MMA. And Augusto Mendez was having success on the feet against Aljamain. Uh, before that, lost to a Sunsau. Before that, lost to Caraway. Um, and the fact that both those fights were splits, I highly disagree with that. I thought a Sunsau and Caraway clearly, clearly, clearly won those fights against Aljo. And before that, he's picking up uh, nice little wins over uh, the old men of the division, like Johnny Eduardo and Takeya Mizugaki, um, Hugo Viana, uh, even a Cody Gibson win. Cody Gibson, who even is that? He's not in the UFC anymore. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm actually a fan of Cody Gibson. But, yeah, man, I don't know. I'm just going through tape. I wasn't all that impressed with Aljamain Sterling. He's a he's a good grappler. He's a good athlete. Just not there on the feet. Um, but this guy, Brett Johns, one does not simply go 15-0 and 0 in MMA. And it's not even just that. He has a nice little 4-5 or 5-0 uh, or and 0 in uh, amateur as well. So, I mean, we're talking like a combined 20-0 and 0 here for uh, Brett Johns. And he's beating good guys. He's beating good guys. Um, that last fight against uh, Joe Soto, people will say, oh, well, Joe Soto, he, he, he's losing early in the first round in his last couple of fights. Can you really take that? I mean... Looking at Joe Soto, yeah, he got knocked out by a Yuri Alcantara in a minute. That's what Joe Soto does. He goes out there and gets knocked out in a minute. He got knocked out in a minute by Anthony Burchek as well. And who the fuck is Anthony Burchek? Never have we seen Joe Soto go out there and get submitted so quickly. I mean, if we're talking Joe Soto, we're talking a guy who, uh, would he get second place in uh, uh, one of the EVI tournaments? Um Joe Soto is a serious grappler, so for this Welsh kid to come out here and hit him with a calf slicer in 30 seconds, that's nothing That's nothing to just brush over. This kid, Brett Johns, is serious, and it's not even just the calf slicer, man. The dude is a strong, strong grappler, and I think he, um, I think he could pull, pull a few pages out of uh, Brian Caraway's book. I think uh, I think he's just going to put it on Aljamain Sterling, and I honestly believe Brett Johns is better everywhere in this fight. I think he's the better striker. Brett Johns has some work on the feet to go to, just like Aljamain, but I do think Brett Johns is a little a little further ahead than Aljamain when it comes to the striking. I do think he's the stronger grappler. I think he'll uh, be pushing the pace more. I think he's going to make this kid work. Uh, I got uh, Brett Johns here via a 30-27. I think he's going to... Uh, dump Aljamain on his back, and I think he's just going to dominate him for three straight rounds. So, yeah, I got five units on Brett Johns here at minus 115 to win uh, 4.35 units. So I got Brett Johns, 30-27 decision. Um, Go and watch the tape if you haven't, guys, because this kid Brett Johns is serious. Uh, Aljamain Sterling was not that impressed with the tape, and he's coming back way too soon after a knockout loss, and – we know what happens to these guys when they come back too soon after knockout losses. So five units, Brett Johns, let's go. Moving on to the uh, the next fight of the night, man. Here it is, the fourth and final play. We got Tiago Santos, minus 200, taking on Dave Branch, plus 170. Um, so, man, I have a lot of respect for uh, Dave Branch. I mean, one does not simply become a champ champ, uh, even if it's WSOF. That's That's... Not not very uh that's not an easy thing to do, but when you really go back and look at uh this guy's record. So first time I ever saw Dave Branch was at uh UFC 116, the card with uh Brock Lesnar and Shane Carwin. He got KO slammed badly, badly, badly knocked out. And this was eight years ago. Then he goes to the WSOF, he beats a, a long list of uh guys like uh JT Money, Yushin Okami. Uh, then we start getting to the Jesse McGillicott's, Teddy Holders, Clifford Starks, and Vinnie Magalhaes, Luis Taylor, Luis Taylor's of the world. So 
I mean, not the best competition out there in WSOF. Then he comes to the UFC, has a very, very close split decision with uh, Christoph Jocko. I did score that fight for Jay France, but uh, man, if we're talking Christoph Jocko at this point, we're talking about a, uh, a guy who absolutely fell off a cliff. Um, Christoph Frodko is uh, definitely Dave Branch's best win, but... Man, Jocko, I mean, can you really put a lot of stock into that win at this point? I mean, Christoph Jocko has just been looking, uh, I don't know what to say, man. So, something's up with that guy. And uh, so he won a very close split with him. And then in his last fight, he did rock Luke Rockhold. But, I mean, we're talking one of the worst chins in the division. Luke Rockhold eventually got on top. And uh, he made Dave Branch tap to strikes. Very sorry, guys. Um, he made Dave Branch tap two strikes. Dave Branch uh, got his ass beat, man. Um, he went in there with elite competition, and he, uh, he 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 got starched. So now he's coming in here against Tiago Santos. And what can you say about Tiago Santos? So um, Tiago Santos was looking absolutely amazing. Uh, he was on a four-fight uh, win streak against Andy Enns, Steve Bosse, Elias Theodoro, and Nate Marquardt. Then they threw him in there with the elite guy in Gegard Musasi. He got starched. Then he came back against Brazil for a nice little softball fight. Got submitted by Eric Spicely. And man, if we're talking embarrassing losses, that was an embarrassing loss to uh, Eric Spicely there. And, you know, in embarrassing losses like that, it's so easy for guys to just fall off a cliff and never be the same again. But Dave, or excuse me, uh, Tiago Santos put his head down, he grinded. And he now he has won four straight fights via knockout, man. Jack Marshman, Gerald Mearshart, Jack Hermanson, and Anthony Smith. And if we're talking um, Jack Hermanson and Gerald Mearshart, we're talking very talented grapplers. I wouldn't say quite as talented as Dave Branch, but we've seen uh, Tiago Santos beat that type of fighter recently. And I think uh, Tiago Santos is going to be able to come in here and... Uh, Make the dude who just uh, tapped the strikes crumble to his feet or crumble to his knees via a uh, via a body kick. Um, Tiago is just so lethal with those kicks, man. And I think uh, early in the fight, uh, Dave Branch probably is going to be looking for those takedowns. Tiago is going to time him well. He's going to hit him with all kinds of shit. And uh, Tiago Santos first round KO is going to be the pick for me, man. So. Another max bet, guys. I got five units. Tiago Santos at uh, minus 215 to win uh, 2.32 units. So uh, I got a uh, Tiago Santos big here to uh, get the knockout of uh, Dave Branch. So moving on to the next fight here, man. We got a nice little heavyweight fight here, man. Uh, I think it's a showcase fight. We got Justin Big Pretty Willis minus 350 against Chase Sherman plus 290. We know what a fraud Chase Sherman is at this point. He's uh, only got a name because of his Twitter personality. And if we're being honest, uh, his striking shit, his wrestling shit, all he really has is decent leg kicks. And that's what he's got to do. He's got to leg kick Justin Willis here. And that's really it's really the only way he's going to win this one if he uh, gets those leg kicks off early on uh, Justin Willis. But... <laughs> Excuse me, guys. Sick as a dog right now. Uh, he needs to get those leg kicks off on Justin Willis. Slow him down. Otherwise, Justin Willis is going to uh, outstrike him, land some big shots, land some takedowns, beat his ass on the ground. So, I don't know, man. Justin Willis, this, this is uh, – I don't think that we're talking future champ or anything, but we're, we're talking a very good athlete and uh, a good grappler um, making improvements on the feet. So, I think the line is warranted. I think Justin Willis uh, goes in here and makes quick work of uh, Chase Sherman. So moving on to the co-main event here, man. We got Frankie Edgar, minus 245, taking on Cub Swanson, plus 205. Um, Frankie Edgar just got knocked out uh, like a month or two ago. This is this is weird, man. I don't know how to feel about this one. If, if that never have happened and he got this fight with Cub Swanson, He'd be a minus 400, minus 500 favorite here, but that's not the case. Cub Swanson could very well come in here and knock out Frankie Edgar, but, man, just looking at that last fight, he had nothing for Frankie Edgar before, and uh, I would expect that he probably has nothing for Frankie Edgar here as well, so I'm going to go with Frankie Edgar. I think he gets it done by uh, 
by uh, wrestling, of course. So Frankie Edgar is going to come in here, land those takedowns, uh, beat up Cub. I'll say he probably gets it done by a uh, 30-27 decision. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, Frankie Edgar could probably land and the uh, the devastating knockout shot here and uh, out grapple Cub Swanson to a decision victory. Now, would I recommend you play uh, Frankie Edgar at minus 245? Absolutely not. Um because, man, these guys that come back too soon after KO losses, I think we know the story here. He's very lucky with the matchup he's been given here, though, in Cub Swanson because he's got his number. I mean, that wasn't just a uh, nice uh, ass beating he gave Cub Swanson in that first fight. That was a complete and utter domination. So, I mean, I mean, if there's any, if there's ever been a fight where one guy just has the other guy's uh, number, that's... It's going to be this fight, man. Frankie Edgar simply just has Cub Swanson's number. He's going to land the takedowns. He's uh, going to win this fight. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go Frankie Edgar via 30-27 decision. So moving on to the main event of the evening, finally, and I'm due to be in work in like 15, 20 minutes. We got Kevin Lee, minus 150, taking on Edson Barboza, plus 130. Um, this is a weird one, man. Uh, it, it seems like... Um, each guy is each guy is like kryptonite. Uh, Kevin Lee doesn't have the best chin in the world, and he uh, he could get clipped here. Edson Barboza, he uh, just took an ass beating via wrestling, and he could take another one via uh, wrestling here. So I don't know, man. I, I, Edson Barboza is one of those guys. He could be losing the fight. I mean, we saw how badly he. I don't want to say how badly, but he was definitely losing that fight to Benil Dariush and. Flying knee knockout out of nowhere. And that could be what we could see here. Kevin Lee could be dominating this fight for two rounds and flying knee knockout out of anywhere. So I don't know, man. I feel like at the current line, the value is probably on Edson Barboza, if anything. Um, he, he's probably coming back a little too soon. Once again, uh, the trend of this card is guys coming back too soon. So I don't really know. Kevin Lee's an excellent athlete. He's a lot younger. He's a lot more to give to this sport. So yeah, he's probably the rightful favorite. Probably goes in here and out wrestles Edson Barboza, maybe even gets a sub, but I don't know, man. Edson Barboza could end this fight at any moment. Kevin Lee is shown to uh, have a little bit of a chinny chin in the past. So, I mean, it, it, it is Kevin fights, Kevin Lee's fight to lose here. Uh, Edson Barboza could come in here, light him up any second of the fight, but most likely I think we're going to see Kevin Lee takedowns, and I think we're going to see uh, Kevin Lee grinding him out for 15 minutes. So, I got Kevin Lee. 30-27 decision here, actually. So, yeah, uh, Kevin Lee, 30-27 decision via wrestling. And, uh, yeah, that's the card, guys. I appreciate you watching all very much. I, uh, I'm in a very big hurry here. Got to get to work. So, appreciate you all stopping by. Uh, like the video. Comment below. Tell me who you're betting on this card. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitter, at MMAKell, and I want to talk fights with all you guys. So, uh, yeah, once again, thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the fights this weekend, guys.